Hey everyone and welcome to another code review. This time we will review a Flask project and that is a very cool website developed by Top of Tech. So thanks a lot for sharing with me your project and if you want to see your project as a YouTube upload on my channel then definitely consider joining my Discord channel and sending me the link to your project so I can prepare a review for your project. All right, so today we have this cool website which simulates a classroom website. And that means that it is kind of like the idea of Discord where you can just sign in and create uh, some rooms and then you can join channels and chat around with people. So let's see what this site is going to do for us. Now, I'm not going to show every feature here because we don't have too much time, but let's start by signing up, for example. So I can just go ahead and create here a simple um, user. Let's do that very quickly and then generate a password and then you can see that I can select teacher or student. So that is just a platform for learning and probably if you select student or teacher then it's going to set up the permissions of what you can do properly, right? So if I was to select teacher and sign up, you can see that I was able to sign up now and then I can say JCE2 and put in my password, log in. Invalid email. Oh, I should put in the email address. Then sign in. All right. So now that I have logged in here, then uh, let's see what we can do. So we can go to a chat room and start chatting with different people on that one. And we also have the option to start a new conversation in a separated room. You can also see that there is going to be maybe a future implemented about the meeting soon. And I can create a team by myself which means that I can create a classroom so let's say that my first classroom here and um, this is just a simple classroom submit that and you can see that it has been created and it is closed automatically so that is nice and very user friendly and now if I was to go to rooms then you can see that I have here a chat room you see that I have a secondary chat room inside of that like general that is auto generated for us. So really a very cool website and wonderful job for all the contributors of that website. Now let's see the code and see what are the strength areas of this project and also what could be improved in order to apply the best practices for a Flask project. Okay, so let's get started. Now in Flask, you are always going to deal with multiple areas that you need to customize. You have to create your modules in order to modelize what data you want to maintain in the database of that website and as well as how to represent them in the website itself, which is the HTML code part. So like you see here, you can see that we also got reference to some weird language that is called Jinja syntax that allows us to access the data from the database and visualize it generically in our website. So that is very implemented in the most best practice that is possible here. Because you can see that we have here some special HTML files that are called layout and as well as app layout. So those files are like base files that could allow us to not duplicate HTML code. Now, if you watched maybe my Flask queries on Free Code Camp, then you will probably understand what I mean. But this is very good template structure in there, right? So it is very well organized and very understandable. So you can see that we also have some several um, if conditionals which we could achieve by using the Jinja syntax. So from the template wise, the project is very perfect. Everything is really as needed. Okay, so let's go to that double underscore init file here which allows us to mark this directory of classroom manager as a Python package. So the first thing that I noticed here that I would fix is that import line because maybe in some day you will want to use another like another function of that OS library. So it is just the best practice to use import OS and then refer to that as os.path.join. And one more reason for that it is because you also got a built-in join method for strings. So this is going to be confusing if one day you'd like to use the join method for string manipulation and as well as using the join method from the OS library. So that is why usually this is not a great idea to use here from library import the method. So I will change that to import OS and then re-change my 
references here like the following, right? OS.pat. Now I know that it might look like a code duplication, but actually it is not. It is just multiple times that you refer to a specific secondary library inside another large library that is called OS. And that way is just a better way to achieve that. And other than that, the things here are looking very well, although we have some uncommented lines. But that is probably, uh, might be from the first time that uh, this project has been launched because you need to um, modelize the models that you have created as a database. It's like as a table, excuse me. So that is why probably we have a leftover here that could be deleted. So from the forms.py file, I see that everything here is implemented as good as possible. So you can see that we implement here some classes that describes some forms that maybe we need to fill in like we have done with the registration form, right? So you can see that it accepts name, last name, username, email, password, and password confirmation. You can also see that it has validators, which means that if I was to try to use a name with only one character, then I would receive an error that would say me, please use something that is including at least two characters, right? So this file is really implemented well and um, just as needed, exactly like even my tutorial, right? So it is very um, perfectly organized. Okay, so when I go to models.py here to actually see what are the models that has been created here, the model structure is very well organized. And you can see that for user, we have a lot of fields, but that is acceptable because always the user that is logged in is probably including a lot of information that relates to that specific user. So that is great. You can see that we use here a wrapper built in, um, I mean, a magic method. So that is a best practice for debugging in Flask, overriding the REPR method. Although in the last model, I am not sure why you left it like that. So the best practice would be to probably use here assignment submission, and then this will be a great idea to just leave it as it is. Okay, so if we were to go now to routes.py, I actually see a lot of um, routes. So the routes are the functions that will describe what you want to display on the HTML um, template. So that is why, for example, for the login uh, page that we have seen previously, you have your Python code that does something in the background before visualizing everything. So that's, that is the reason you need routes um, on your Flask project. You can see that the routes are well organized in the routes.py file. Now about the, um, about general, about in general what is going on here, I see here a lot of one-liners and that is never going to be a very friendly, especially um, for someone that is not quite familiar with one-liners that are way too complex, right? So I'm not saying that this is something wrong or something, but it could be wonderful if you could split some of the lines to multiple lines. Like for example, um, this line here that returns JSONify, right? We could split that easily by just going here and even go down here and as well as customizing some of those uh, key value pairs that are in this nested uh, dictionary, all right? Then that will be enough, or maybe even this one. So now things are looking way better here, okay? So it looks more friendly and more readable. We can really understand what it does. We have the JSONify function that, um, that has some dictionary and we can see that it is nested because we have new note and one more dictionary again, right? So now things are much more readable. And by the end of this video, when I will apply the black formatting, you can see, you will see that this is going to do this automatically. So my recommendation is always, after a couple of weeks of development of a project, always use a black formatting. Then it will go ahead and try to use PEP8 styling for auto formatting your projects. Okay, so one more thing that I have noticed here is here and there, right? Not too much, but sometimes I noticed a code duplication. And for example, in case you want to create a new object of some module, you usually go ahead and need to execute those several commands, which will look like db.session.add. And you can see how many of those we have. And then you're gonna need to execute db.session dot um, commit, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so you can see that as well. Now, 
the best way to try to avoid this is to actually design more instance methods in your models. Now think about that. If you were to go to your models here and use this direct message model, then you can actually use here some models that will allow you to call those from a specific object and then you will not have to repeat yourself for every time that you'll need to change something in the database. So for example, let's say that you want to send a direct message. I'm not really 100% familiar with the project, but just trying to give a theoretic idea here. Let's say that you want to send a direct message to someone, then it's a better idea to go ahead with a method that will say def send direct message and then receive a destination argument here, something like that, and then you will only call this method rather than just trying to maybe call the db.session.add or commit a couple of times. Now, I noticed that, for example, if we were to go back to routes, I'm going to search here for membership and then add an opener parentheses. So you can see that we call those two, three lines and as well as those three lines twice. So that is a quite of code duplication that we could avoid because you can see that the only difference between those three lines to those three lines are the role changing from super to regular. So what we could do instead is the following thing. All right, so on the left side, we have the models.py and you can see that I'm focused on the membership model and on the right side, we have this membership um, creation area with those two lines, which says db.session.add and then committing the changes to the database. Now, what we could do instead is actually creating a static method that will receive some of the arguments that are necessary in order to create that membership um, class, um, I mean instance, right? So we could say here something that will go like that. So I will say static method, and this is just a decorator that will allow us to create methods that are not belonged to a specific instance. Besides, it is just going to be like a method that you can use globally for all the instances, but that is specifically related to the membership model. So that is why I'm writing this method inside the class itself. Okay, so I'm going to say def add membership, and then this is going to receive keyworded arguments here like that, and then I'm going to say new membership is equal to membership like that, and I'm just going to do this one. User ID is equal to keyworded arguments dot get user underscore ID. And I'm going to duplicate this line two more times. And I'm just going to replace those. So classroom ID, let's receive that one. And then I'm going to do that with the role. Okay, role is equal to keyworded arguments dot get role. And then I could easily say, I mean, not say, but I could just copy that and paste this in inside the static method and leave it as it is. And now the one thing that I can do here is deleting everything from here. I will delete that. I just want to see the values, but I could just easily say membership dot add membership and then just basically pass in those. Okay. And then I could delete everything like that. So that is much more, um, I mean, much more efficient, right? So that is one way that we could do that. And I could now do the same for the new membership creation down below. So let me focus on that and jump in the lines here as well. So we can, we can see what is going on here. Now I will allow myself to copy those and delete everything and easily say membership.add membership and then just paste in the values that we'd like to pass in here. So that is way more efficient, okay? So we don't have to call the db.session.add from a multiple ways. That is also something that I have done, for example, in my Flask project as well. I noticed that I'm repeating the process of db.session.add and committing too much times. So I decided to go with some instance or static methods that will allow me to 
like not repeating this uh, same annoying db dot whatever comment it is to save my changes. All right, so speaking about the membership module in this project, I also noticed that this project includes a network.py file, which is probably dealing with a, a Python socketing. So that means that we need to use a networking sockets in, in order to apply a chat between different people. And that is probably the file that deals with that. Now I've noticed here some more um, references to membership.role being equal to super or to um, regular, or I don't remember the, exactly the role name, but maybe it could be a better idea to maintain all the possible roles in a separated file that we could name it constants, I don't know, something that you'd like to, that just will describe what are the values that you probably know that are never going to change, and maybe it could be more friendly to refer them as in that way, okay? So for example, you can see that we see this role string um, I mean super string as a role a candidate option super so we got one and then two and if I was to go to the routes then you can see that this super is here as well so maybe we could go and create here a constants.py and we could use something like class role and then here you could add some roles like that okay so super will equal to super and no no other role is equal to whatever string you'd like and then what you can do is you can refer to role dot super and this way we can totally understand that this is just a role that we could like use and not just a string that appears from nowhere so if i was to go to routes dot py then I can easily say something like um, import constants, I mean classroom.manager constant as const, or you can maybe use something like from classroom manager.constants import role, and then so there are multiple options here, right? You can use the from import here. It's not like the OS example before because it could just override more methods. But here, that is probably not the case. So if I was to look for super, then I can just change that to role.super. I could do the same for here. Role.super. And for sure, I can also do that in here. Let's import that first from class for manager dot constants import role then i can just go here and change those as well okay so you got the idea i'm not going to do that but that is also a great option so maybe if in the future you would like to add more roles or you just want to change the name of the role from super to admin for whatever reason if this is something that could happen then it is just a great idea to only have one reference of everything rather than trying to use some external maybe tools to find all the role strings in the entire project, right? That is going to be a headache. So that is why maybe um, creating a constants.py from the very beginning of this large project is a great idea. Okay, so let's talk about the readme.md file as well. So that is a file that describes what a project does and as well as some instructions. So this is a file that I expect to see in each project that is being sent to me because it is nice to have a short description about what the project uh, is about and as well as how to run it locally on my local computer. Now, this also goes for other people that wants to execute this project locally because not everyone must be familiar with Flask, right? So it is nice that it has instructions and as well as a short description. And again, thanks a lot to Top of Tech and as well as to Adri711 to sending me this project. Now let's see how the project will look like after applying the black formatting. Okay, so we have those two windows side by side. So I'm going to execute here the command that will be responsible to format this project. So it will be as easy as first going with pip install black and then once we have this, as for me, we will see requirement already satisfied. We will clean the screen and we will say Python dash M black. And we will use the current directory to run over each of the Python files in this project. So once I will go ahead with that, then you can see that we receive those logs, which says to us reformatted each one of the Python files. Now, if I was to focus back on the PyCharm, like the following, then you're going to see some 
a lot of lines being just split into different areas and that is because those are just PEP8 conventions. You can see that we also have this from the import there and as well as um, from some long one-liners that we had as well as in some areas that like here for example where the dictionary is split into different lines and this is pretty much is going on in each file right so you can see now it is much more readable and we don't have too much lines that are using for example 200 characters or something like that and that is just a great way to organize and make your project more readable Okay, so if you want to see your project as well on my channel as a review video, then be sure to send me your project on the Discord server or just find a way to contact me directly from the links that are in the description down below. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like that and as well as subscribe to my channel so you will never miss a code review video and I will see you very soon.